This question does not ask for the second derivative. And in fact, we can see that the second derivative is going to have probably inflection point at zero. We're going to go ahead and do this anyways, just to get some practice with this. So we're going to take the, the first derivative and differentiate it again to get a second derivative. And then we'll do a concavity chart for this. So differentiating that expression, I get negative 4x, and then I get 1 minus square root 1 minus x squared minus, and we've got to be careful, there's lots of terms here, 1 minus 2x squared, and then the derivative of that square root expression is going to be 1 over 2 square root 1 minus x squared, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. Okay, and then we're going to put that all over the square root of 1 minus x squared and then squared. So that's my, my quotient rule. So we want to simplify these things whenever we can. So I've got a times 2 <coughs> divided by 2. Watching my signs here, I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to do this in a few steps. So negative 4x minus 1 times, sorry, times 1 minus x squared. Okay, I'm going to put this plus here because we have two, a double negative here, and then there's an extra x here, so I'm going to write this as x minus 2x cubed. And this portion only is going to have my denominator 1 minus x squared. Okay, and then that's going to be all over my common denominator 1 minus x squared. Squared, well, I should just get rid of that square root. And it just becomes 1 minus x squared. Okay, so I have my, in my concavity chart, at 1 and negative 1, again, we have undefined concavity because of that divide by plus minus 1, or divide by 0 when we have x equals plus minus 1. So I'm going to uh, simplify this expression. Again, it's important to simplify expressions when I can. Before, I just kind of got a common denominator. Here, I'm just going to do it slightly differently. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom of this fraction. Actually, I'm just going to do it this way, sorry. I'm going to multiply through by this fraction, by this, by the denominator on top, and I'm going to do it on the bottom. Okay, so it's going to give me a rational exponent on that denominator. So this ends up being, when I multiply that through, I get negative 4. The square roots cancel out, plus x minus 2x cubed. This denominator cancels out here. And then in the denominator here, oops, I forgot if x in here, so I better make sure I don't forget that. Negative 4x. In the denominator here, I end up with 1 minus x squared to the power 1 times the power 1 half. So I get power 3 over 2. Okay, and then I'm going to simplify that numerator. And so I end up with positive 4x cubed minus 2x cubed. That gives me positive 2x cubed. And it's going to end up with negative 4x plus x is minus 3x. Okay, and then I'm going to have my denominator here, 1 minus x squared to the power 3 over 2. And I can see then that we have when I factor out the x, I end up with 2x squared minus 3, and that's all over 1 minus x squared to the power 3 over 2. So this is equal to 0 at x equals 0. So I'm going to put that into my concavity chart here. That's going to be equal to 0. So I have a change of concavity. I can see on my graph that there's a change of concavity there. And I'm going to solve this equation. So I end up with the, this other equation here, which I'm just going to highlight here. So I'm going to solve that. So I end up with 
x squared is equal to 3 over 2. x is equal to plus minus square root 3 over 2. Okay, this number here is going to be bigger than 1. So our change of concavity is outside the domain of the graph. So the domain of the graph, if you recall, is between positive 1 and negative 1. So these, these, this point that I solve for here, this does not exist. Okay, so we don't need those points. So now I only have that one point for my concavity. And I, again, I can see clearly my concavity. And it's important to understand, we don't really need to do the second derivative test. But I'm just doing it for so that will show you that we can do second derivative tests and some algebra that we can use to simplify these things. But really, we don't need to, but I'm doing it anyways. I put in point five, negative 0.5 into my concavity, or my second derivative. I get positive. I put negative or positive 0.5 into my concavity, my second derivative. I get negative. And then I end up with this concavity change at 0. It is an inflection point at 0.